Brand new Amanda Marshall, I Hope She Cheats, from Amanda's latest album, which fans, including us, have waited so long for. It's called Heavy Lifting, and it's out June the 9th, and this is The Morning Zoom with Sam and Jane. A couple of days after her album release, Amanda will hit the road for a cross-Canada tour that includes two shows here in Toronto at Massey Hall. Like I said, we are big, big, big yes, fans we are. of We're Amanda almost, Marshall. I don't know, I feel like a little girl. I, I, I do not. I feel like a full-blown woman who's got a big crush on Amanda Marshall, okay? And we're so happy that Amanda Marshall is back and writing and recording and performing. We have missed you. Can you tell Amanda Marshall? She's here. I've missed you, too. Thank you. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I have to tell you my fangirl story. Tell me, tell me, tell me. So when I last talked to you about 20 years ago, Mm -hmm. uh, my kids were little. I was stressed out. Uh, you came into the studio at a different radio station with this beautiful long white coat and your Starbucks, just like today, which is <laughs> my matching Starbucks. <laughs> and you inspired me to go out and buy a similar coat that same day. And oh I boy. always called it my Amanda Marshall coat. <laughs> I, wore, I wore that coat for like 10 years. Oh, awesome. geez. <laughs> yes. So, yes, we've missed you. Um, what has been your focus while you've been away from producing music? Well, I was never away from producing music. I was always writing and recording. I uh, I came off the road in 2000, I think it was 2002. It was around the sort of the, the touring cycle. It was the end of the touring cycle for my third record, Everybody's Got a Story. And I came off the road and I fired my manager and it triggered just an endless avalanche of legal nonsense that lasted for about 12, 12 years, just a little mm-hmm. over a decade. It just kept going on and on because he wouldn't capitulate and I wouldn't capitulate and these things happen. Yeah. And I am... Definitely not the only person this has ever happened to. I don't think it's quite as common now because the music business has sort of restructured itself in a way that the power dynamic is a little bit different. Mm. And there's more power, I think, in the hands of people who kind of make music. But so it just sort of went on and on. And I was always writing and recording music, but there was considerable question sort of towards the end of that period about whether I was going to do it in public because you really do kind of start to lose. You get kind of sucked into your regular life, yes, first of all. Yes, of course. Which is not a bad thing. Honestly, it, it turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to me. At the beginning, I really thought it was the worst thing that had ever happened to me. Um, because you really feel like you're the only person it's ever happened to or ever going to happen to. But towards the end of it, I realized this is the best thing that ever happened to me. It forced me on a, on a personal level to really grow up mm-hmm. and kind of learn a whole set of life skills that you don't naturally learn when you have that kind of success at a, at a younger age. Because there is this kind of necessary infrastructure that kind of springs up around you and people start removing obstacles from your way right. and you you don't really learn how to be an adult. Oh, right. You know? Yes. Okay, so the rest, the time away, I mean, still working in, in the music business, can you expand on the other stuff, the personal stuff, or like what's going on in your real life outside of music? <laughs> Tell us about the, the real stuff. Well, it was little things. It sounds really, really boring and meaningless, but it's little things like, you know, being able to own a pet. Being, because there are things that, that you can't do. You, can't, you can have it all, but you can't really have it all at the same time. Yeah. And if you're operating at a level where you can get somebody to like look after your kids on the road or look after your pets when you're on the road or you know look after your home when you're on the road, purchasing your first house and getting to really live in that house mm. and getting to decorate it yourself and getting to learn how to pay your own bills and look after your money and you know have relationships with people that don't necessarily revolve around work outside of your job is a really important life skill that most people learn as a natural progression into adulthood. Yeah. But you don't learn those. And I think it's why a lot of, um, a lot of musicians kind of, kind of go off the rails when they come off the road because there isn't this whole infrastructure around you. There, there aren't people there to kind of take care of you and feed you and make sure you get to the next right. thing, <laughs> right? So once you learn those skills, you really realize that you're a lot more capable than perhaps you think you are. Yeah. It makes a huge, huge difference just in your day-to-day life. Wow. wow. Let's talk about you as a performer at 50 uh, and how you've evolved uh, with your music and what we can expect uh, from a 2023 Amanda Marshall show versus a 2003 <laughs> Amanda Marshall show. Well, I will say that the best compliment that I've gotten on this new album, Heavy Lifting, is that it sounds like me, but now. Yeah. And, you know, I am not, um, I'm not somebody who ever really 
chased trends in my creative life. I wasn't somebody who was chasing trends with every new album. Every album was sort of, you know, an iteration of where I was at that particular point. So I'm not competing with Taylor Swift and Katy Perry and, you know, Dua Lipa and all that stuff. Because th those are not the records that I make naturally. But mm -hmm. um, we did a string of dates in 2017 um, that were sort of, sort of across the country. They're mostly in Ontario, but some out west. And that really was a catalyst for me because as a performer, it gave me an opportunity to reconnect with the audience, see what kind of the demand was and kind of what they, where they were at. But it really drove home to me that I am a much more uh, sort of dynamic and confident performer than I, I, and I was always a very dynamic, confident performer, but it gave me an opportunity to kind of see what I wanted to uh, lean into. Yeah. Um, where the holes in the set were, what kind of songs we wanted to write for the album, what we wanted to kind of shore up, what my kind of groove aesthetic was, what I loved, what I was um, excited to sing every night. So that's what this record is really all about. You know, what I love about you and what resonated with me, because Janie and I are about the same age, our kids are about the same age, is that um, I didn't just love, you know, the single that was released from one of your albums. I loved all mm -hmm. of the songs on all of the albums. Oh, They're, thanks. You're a great storyteller, and Thank you've you. also got a fantastic sense of humor inside yeah. the lyrics, which <laughs> gives me joy, you know, in a very sort of simple way. But you can hear your singing, which is rare for a lot of artists, to actually hear the words, understand the story, and then smile, right? And I'm sure that this album does the same thing. I, I just, I wanted to tell you that, that that, it's, that is one of the charms and the joy in listening to your work. Um, how cool is it that you sold out Massey Hall? So you- So you kind of, cool! You, you step back for So all much of cooler these than years. if I hadn't. I know, that, that, that is true. But so- How uncool would that be? <laughs> <laughs> but it's a huge expectation. I mean, really, after, after being gone for so long, save for the 2017 part, to then play Massey Hall, sell it out, be so big that they add a second show. Like, that's amazing. It is amazing. It totally, I'm gonna be really honest, and this truly is the, the absolute truth. I was shocked. I mean, I really, um, I came into this, I mean, the album kind of aside, I came into this whole kind of resurgence thing. I had no expectations at all. And the truth is, I made a record that I love and I'm at a sort of a place where I am just like personally, I'm really happy. And so I had a very low bar for what I needed to kind of like satisfy, to scratch that itch. Mm -hmm. I was really happy with the record and I was like, you know what? Let's just see what happens. So to do that in my hometown at a place where I have seen so, I mean, you have no idea how many shows I have seen at Massey Hall. I have sat in, I think probably every section of that theater. I haven't been there ironically since the renovation. So to get an opportunity to play it after it's been renovated and to sell it out and to add a second night, to me was like, as a hometown girl, that means everything to you. And it's funny, because I've talked to other people, I have friends who live in like, you know, musicians live in like Philadelphia or Detroit or New York. And when you sell out, it doesn't matter if you're selling out Irving Plaza, if you're selling out, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm blanking on the, what the theater is in LA. But you know, when you sell out your hometown, that is so deeply meaningful oh, because you've right. seen so many yeah. shows in those theaters. Yeah, you know? yes, exactly. That's yeah. neat. Now, we have to ask you, um, in, because we cater to a mature audience, mm. Um, which is nice. We're talking to ourselves, which we always enjoy. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yourselves and my mom. Hi, yeah, mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you too, because it's 45 plus. There you go. Yes, yeah, there you go. Yes. And, and Amanda, you've recently turned 50. It's no secret. It's on the internet. Right. Um, how are you? You obviously have lots of energy and vitality. How are you aging well at this point in your life? It's really, you know what's really funny? We were talking uh, last night. We were watching um, the Tina Turner biopic was on. Obviously. So good. So good. Yes. And I was saying, and my mom was watching, I was on the phone with my mom, and she was watching it too. And I said to her, you know what's amazing to me? Beyond her incredible uh, dignity, like she was always really dignified. You know she had a really chaotic, messy life, but she was always so dignified. But beyond that, she never, even in her younger years when she was with Ike, she always looked like a woman. Yeah. Like she never looked like a girl. There was nothing juvenile or kind of, you know, cling she never looked like she was sort of clinging to anything. And I think that really is uh, sort of the key. I think the key is like lean into it. I, I am not somebody who has ever feared 
aging mostly because I've never really seen what the big deal was. When you're 13, you don't fear turning 16. You can't wait to get there. Yeah, that's right. When that's you're true. 20, you want to be 30. When you're 30, you you start to realize, man, I'm going to be 40. Like. What's that going to be like? And I did not pay. I remember when, when I turned 40, people were like, well, how do you feel? How do you feel? You're 40 now. And I was like, I, I don't feel any different than I did yesterday. I feel fantastic. I'm healthy, which I think is really, Huge. you know, if you're sick when you're 25, like you're sick when you're, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I, to me, I have always felt like, um, em, you know, embrace sort of wherever you are. Be happy that you're healthy. I'm incredibly lucky that I get to do what I love with people that I love. So, I, you know, to me, it's never been uh, a huge deal. It's never been a big fear of mine. Love it. Love it. Okay, before we let you go, uh, message to your fans. After all these years, everyone is bubbling to the surface and going, finally, <laughs> Amanda is back. So is there a message that you'd like to deliver to them ahead of the start of your tours? Just that I am, I'm so excited to, to get to see everybody again. I don't know any musician who does not view making records as a vehicle to getting out and traveling and touring, getting to see the country again, getting to reconnect with people the the fact that I have uh, this catalog to lean into where I know that these songs are so deeply meaningful to people is such a gift and somebody asked me the other day does it feel weird that people are bringing their kids to the shows mm -hmm. that to me is the greatest gift you can get as an artist that you you know you get to see people of a different generation singing these lyrics that they grew up you know hearing in the car on the way to school <laughs> or that they danced in the living room with their mom and dad yes. that is amazing that's why you know, that's why we do this. You can't keep reinventing yourself for the same people over and over and over again. That's the goal. The goal is to see a wide variety, a diverse group of people at your shows. So we are so excited to get back out there oh, and, and sing these songs. You've made us so happy. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I'm going to your sold out show June the 16th because as soon as those tickets went on sale, oh, great. I was right there. <laughs> so, and, and I'm taking my son. Because awesome. he remembers the songs because I played them endlessly <laughs> in the car. I'm sorry. In the house. I'm, so, I'm sorry yeah, about that. No, I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and they know every word. And they too, know every right? word. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, anyway, so thank you so much for being here. It's oh, been very for special me. for us. Uh, Award winning Canadian singer songwriter Amanda Marshall. Amanda's brand new album, Heavy Lifting. It's out June the 9th. The 25 and counting, the Heavy Lifting tour begins June the 11th in New Brunswick and lands here in Toronto. Amanda's hometown, Massey Hall, June 16th and 17th. I hope you feel so much love this entire tour. You deserve it. Oh, thank it. you. Thank you very much. I feel it already. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>